Alright, so I'm going to start this video showing how to do a political cartoon. We'll be painting over actual photos and showing a tracing technique. I don't always do tracing, but when I do, I like to play with how it looks and sometimes manipulate it a little bit so it won't look exactly the same as the picture. I do try to be a bit creative, so even though we're going to be tracing, it's going to be uh, very stylized and unique, and it won't look exactly like the picture. So I'm going to show how we do that. I've started by putting some pictures into my library. Uh, if you're not sure how to use the library system, I highly recommend um, using it. It's a great tool. So to access the libraries, just very quickly, um, you can go from window down to libraries and show it. Just make sure it's checked and it will show up. What I like about libraries is you can save colors and images. So I've started by putting a conference table that I want to use in the cartoon here. And what's really cool about having it in the library is you don't have to copy and paste it into your image. So you don't have to transform it down and it being too big. Uh, in the libraries, it actually makes it so it's a pretty decent size when you drop it into your, your picture. So I'm going to be sort of diving into this. Um, I'll, I'll explain some of the shortcuts that I use in the beginning, and then after that, I'll just kind of zip through it. Um, I do tend to sometimes uh, go pretty fast in some areas and I'll slow down in the beginning just to make sure that we're on the same page and feel free to uh, pause and replay back anything that you may have missed because I will sometimes only say things once and then kind of move through it. Um, in this one what we're going to do is show uh, a conference table that can seat at least eight people because we know that the Trump Tower meeting, which is something in the news right now, uh, involved at least eight people that we know of. Now, five of those individuals are identified um, and we have their photos and then three of them, we're not sure of their, their pictures, like it's sort of been kept kind of secret. <laughs> so we're going to just show some of them, uh, some of the individuals, and the ones that we don't will be portrayed as being redacted. So we'll just blacken them out. Um, so I've put images in here of Donald Trump Jr., Jared Kushner, Natalia with the long name, and then Paul Manafort and Rob Goldstone. What's cool about libraries is that you can just drag and drop images that you like. So I'm going to start with uh, Trump Jr. and put him here. And I'm going to size his face down to where he would be sort of sitting at the table, kind of like so. It's OK to make a face sort of bigger than the body or smaller um, because we're going to be exaggerating. That's kind of the point of political cartoons. So. Um, I've already sort of picked his uh, face so that it's facing the right, um, and then on her side, she'll be facing this way, and that way they'll kind of be facing each other a bit. Now, it doesn't matter sort of how big they're going to be. It doesn't matter if we sort of enlarge their faces really, really large and lose detail. That really doesn't matter because we're going to be painting over their faces anyway. So the detail isn't really going to be something we're going to worry about. We're going to put him behind him. And it's okay that his face is sort of blocked because we're going to be cutting out the background of Donald Trump Jr.'s uh, image there. This is just to kind of get them set up. Now I don't know where they were sitting. I'm just sort of guessing here. For all I know, it could have been on the other side of the table. Um, let's 
make this one a little bit smaller. And then we'll put him in the back here. So I'm going to go ahead and pause uh, by sort of like moving these out of the way. We're going to focus only on this one for now. We're going to focus on Donald Trump Jr. Um, now what I like to start with usually is I like to use my pen tool, which is right here. And I like to click and drag, click and drag, and we're going to go all the way around the image so we get a nice, clean... Um, headshot of Don Jr. here. We could leave the background in. It's not something you have to do. Um, I've done quite a few where I've left it in. Um, but in this one, we're going to just take it out completely. When it's really hard, like in that situation, to get real close, I like to do Control plus to zoom in. I'm pressing H for the hand tool to kind of move it. I'm going to go close again, press the hand tool. We're going to go back to our pen and kind of click and drag. I just pressed H. That little hand cursor there is uh, really interesting. To do the pen tool, we press P. So I'm going to start pressing P. Whenever we get off the pen tool, I need to revert back. I'm pressing Control Z because I'm going back just a little bit. If you ever mess up like that, just press Control Z. Whenever you see me moving this around, it's pressing H for the hand tool. It doesn't actually move the image. It just moves it uh, visually sort of virtually it lets me see a different view of it by moving where the picture is without actually manipulating any pixels once we have the entire pen tool um, sort of highlighted around the entire image we're gonna go in and just kind of fix any areas that were kind of glazed over too quickly again it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be, again, we're going to be drawing over it. And we're going to be changing it too, so it won't look exactly the same. We just want to get a general sort of shape without including background. Because we're going to be painting our own background. But we do want to get a general profile. I like to do sort of an accurate profile of a person. Uh, when I do manipulate, I still want to have a general face that you can kind of really accurately see. So I'm going to zoom out by pressing Control minus, and this way we kind of get sort of an overall look. I'm going to go to my magnifying glass and kind of look at it like this. All right, so to highlight what we've just made, we click on Paths. If you don't have Paths up, you can simply go to Windows, Paths, and just make sure it's checked. So we're going to start by going to Paths, and if it's not highlighted, you could just highlight this work path. You can also save the path. So if I wanted to save this path, I could save it as John Jr., press OK, and now it will be remembered that it's there, you know. So if you press Control and press Don Jr. at the same time or the name of your layer, uh, notice that it highlights everything except what you just did. So if I <coughs> uh, want to just delete the background, I can just press backspace. Oops. Yeah. No, let me go back to layers. I may have to rasterize it. Yeah. I could convert this to a smart object, but I just am going to be deleting it. So before that, we'll just go down to rasterize. So it is... That's one thing to remember, if you're just working with a regular image, you can just do the technique I was about to do and delete, but when you're dealing with an image from the libraries, um, 
you're not able to directly edit it. So you do have to rasterize the layer. So I like to go to layer, rasterize, I'm gonna rasterize the layer. And now it's directly editable. So we can go to paths and make sure it's just highlighted, it is. And we're gonna press, um, oops, delete, press backspace. If you ever mess up like I just did, no big deal, just press control Z. I press it like a million times a day. Um, let's try delete instead of, oh, let's uncheck that. That's what it is. So we uncheck it and then press delete. There we go. So um, on some computers, you probably want to press delete and on some others, probably backspace. I'm going to undo what I just did, even though it's perfect. I just kind of want to go back and make sure you can do backspace. Yeah. So that time I press backspace and that time I press delete. So in that case, you can use either one and it'll work. Just make sure you rasterize the layer. You don't always have to rasterize the layer, but when you're dealing with library images or um, smart objects, you kind of want to do that. Um, all right. I like to use my history tool to kind of go back through time to kind of see where I, where I was. So if you're not sure about the history tool, I, I use it all the time, so I have to talk about it. Um, it. To access it, go to Windows, go to History, and just make sure it's checked. Once it's checked, you just go over here, and um, you can go through time, basically, and see where you were. <laughs> Uh, at the bottom is where you last were, and you can keep scrolling up. Don't check this left check boxes. Just highlight the names of the things where it says like new anchor point, drag. Um, if you're going to go here, then that's going to be your art history brush, and that's a whole different thing. We don't want to use that right now, although we can use it in the future. I can show how to do that. Um, right now, though, we're just going to kind of stick with the game plan. So to unselect what we just did, see how there's little marching ants going all the way around his face and the edge? Just press Control D, that will deselect. Now we can kind of see where he'll be sitting. We'll draw his body in, we'll draw in a body, we'll draw in the chair behind him, but we just kind of want to get a profile. Uh, we're going to do the same thing with Jared Kushner. So to hide Trump Jr., we're just going to un. I'm going to turn this little eyeball off, on, off and on, and zoom in on Jared Kushner. I like to zoom in and out, kind of remember it's control minus, control plus, and H kind of moves this where we want it. We're going to go to the pen tool, and we're going to just quickly draw it in. Anytime you uh, kind of want to go back, you can just press control Z. Z is in zebra. Undo, undo, undo. Every Photoshop artist I know uses the undo button just as much as they do anything else. So don't be afraid of it and don't think that it's like messing up all the time. Because sometimes you can go back and use your art history brush, which is basically using all of your undos to actually make paint. So even if you mess up, it can still be really cool with things you can do with things you've messed up with. So don't sweat it. All right, we're going to go to paths, and we're going to save this path as Jared. And we're going to go to, where was it? Layer, rasterize, layer. All right, now we can go to make sure it's not checked. Go to layers, we're on the right layer. Hit delete and control D. Now notice here at the top, it's sort of missing the top of his head. We're not gonna worry about that because we're gonna draw it in ourselves. We're tracing it, but we don't need a full image of him. We just sort of need a little bit. So right now it kind of looks like they're gonna be sitting like that. Now we'll do Paul Manafort, I'm going to kind of zoom in. We're going to be putting him in a suit. So even though he has sort of this uh, collar, we're going to pretend that he's wearing a suit and, and sort of treat his shoulders like he's wearing shoulder pads of a different kind. 
instead of a very puffy collar. We're going to go around his hair a bit. Again, we're going to be drawing it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. I stopped his shoulder right here instead of going all the way to the end because we're going to be doing a cartoon. So we're going to be changing sort of some elements of them. There's going to be other elements too. Let's go ahead and save this path. Rasterize layer. Delete, Control D, D for deselect. Now we can kind of see how those would sit in the meeting. We have Rob, so let's go and do the same thing with him that we just did with the others. Kind of goes by fairly fast when you do it this way. Um, some people who are not familiar with the pen tool tend to paint and erase manually and that's okay too this is just sort of faster for me because I'm I've been using this pen tool for a long time I'm gonna get closer whenever that happens like see how it was kind of missing some of the curvy areas when that happens you just want to zoom in zoom in zoom in it's kind of pixelated but that doesn't matter we're not going to be using this uh, exact photo we're gonna be going over it um, I used to work at a design um sort of i wouldn't really call it design it's a newspaper where we did design um we would have to do clipping paths around everything from houses to cars to furniture i mean so much furniture um so going over like things like hair and uh, just feeling comfortable to go in and zoom in and get all the nuance of what you want to get uh, is something we would do a lot. Some people, you know, are find really impressive with pictures how much cropping is actually done. You can go, whoa, how did you do that? And usually the secret is just to zoom in. Um, I would say that's probably one of the biggest secrets of being a great Photoshop designer is zooming in, zooming in, zooming in, zooming in, <laughs> zooming out, zooming in. Um, once you kind of feel comfortable zooming in really close so you can get extremely good detail. I think um, that's probably sort of the best advice I can give uh, when it comes to starting Photoshop or even getting really good at it is zooming in more. Like if I were working at a, um, a newspaper and I were going over this exact image I would want to get even closer. Like I might even want to get this close. Maybe not that close, maybe that close. But we don't need to be this close, so we're gonna just... I don't want this here, I kinda wanna go here, so I'm gonna uh, press this delete one right here. This minus will show up and see how it got rid of that. And I can just pick up where I last left off by pressing P or going over here and doing it. I keep pressing B and going to that, and that's because I'm so used to painting. Uh, sorry about that. So anytime I, you see me moving it around and you see this little hand tool, you'll know it's me pressing the letter H rather than going over here and pressing this little tool. Um, sometimes I just find it faster. So we have Paul Manafort now, we're going to zoom out. I'm pressing Control minus. I can move this a little bit. Press it let me. All right, so paths, save. Wait, is his name Rob or Rod? Oh, I got it right, okay, it's Rob. So I pressed control and then that. <laughs> I 
Now I'm pressing delete, control D to deselect. I'm going to layers and we're going to make visible those. And you can kind of see already how they're going to sit around the table. Um, we kind of have Rob's arm coming way into the table and same thing with Paul Manafort. We're going to go in and we'll fix that up in a little bit. First, we're going to go ahead and just do the same thing to this person, Natalia, Natalia, I don't know how to pronounce her name. I haven't looked much into her. Um, we're going to just go over the pen tool and just do the same thing. From what I understand, this person that I'm clipping is uh, a Russian lawyer who uh, is kind of shady. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so to select this, I have control, and I could just, you know, like select this, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit Control Z and just do what I was doing. We're going to go to Paths, Save, um, Natalia, Natalia. With that are selected, we're going to go to the Rasterize Layer, and then Delete. Oops, I deleted the other thing. So this is where you want to check your layers. I, I don't know why, but it had moved here instead of... Here. Hmm, it jumped. This is why it's important to check your layers and just make sure it's on the right one. I like to name my layers for this exact reason because I work with a lot of layers. I mean, I had a lot of layers before I even started this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, make sure you name them. And if you're not sure how, you just double click it like that. Don't double click the picture, don't double click the eyeball, double click the name, and then you can just rename. That makes life easier because <laughs> if it just says layer one, layer four, layer ten, uh, you can get it's really hard to see in the thumbnail very small details that you've added. So this kind of helps. Um, we're gonna hit delete now. It should work. Oh, did I not do? A, oh, I think I rasterized this one instead of this one. That's right. We needed to rasterize both of them anyway. So we'll just go to rasterize layer. All right. So now it's rasterized, and notice how. The little symbol that was in front of the thumbnail is removed. That means it's been um, rasterized and it's not uh, treated like a smart object anymore. Now we're going to go to path. Just make sure it's not checked. Because if it were like this, um, sometimes that's an issue. I'd just like to unclick it and just click delete. There we go. Now we press Control D, deselect. The other people who are going to be sitting on this side of the table, I'm going to draw them in later since they're going to be redacted. So this is sort of going to be what we're going to work with. Um, I'm going to start by going to Rob. We're going to manipulate where his original picture is showing his arm because his arm is kind of going off the seat. So I'm using a, um, a pen tablet, H-U-I-O-N. It's sort of like a pen tool. So I'll be going back and forth between a digital pen and a mouse. Right now I'm pressing inside brackets to lower the size of the brush. You can go inside bracket or outside bracket. Outside bracket makes it bigger and every time you press an inside bracket it gets smaller. I'll be going smaller to bigger quite a bit. Um, before I get started on the brush I'm going to show you how I came about this brush. But first I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit more and just kind of move this here. So before I start line work or remove anything, um, uh, I do want to show you my brushes. Maybe I'll do that later. No, I should probably do it now. Okay, so you could just use any eraser tool uh, to erase this, but if I do that, I'm not going to get a really good close kind of erase. So notice how the what I just did there, I'm going to undo it. But as you can see, if I were to use that, the opacity was at 43%. That's just not going to work. If I did it 100, that'd be great, but it's all fuzzy. We don't want it fuzzy. We want to increase the hardness. 
So you could go to brush settings and increase the hardness by just dropping it all the way there. See how it kind of would do that. Um, this brush is kind of big. I'm going to make it smaller. Again, it's small bracket, small bracket. Or you can go here to size, which kind of change it up. Right now it's on 8. I kind of like 8, 10, 12. When I'm working in small areas, I like to work in 3s and 4s. For this, we'll just kind of do like 12. Should be fine. So what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of erase the part of him that's kind of going over the, the conference table here. In fact, we can hide the conference table. That way we make sure we don't miss a spot. Um, like right here. But we kind of need to see a little bit. So now we're going to kind of just make sure that he's... We can always draw him in sideways so we can kind of show where he is. This is just so that he's not um, layered over the table. To do Paul Manafort right here, he's on a different layer. We're going to click on him and press E to erase. I erased too much, so I'm going to go back in and do that again. There we go. All right. Now we're going to control minus to zoom out. Alright, so we have them sort of um, placed in an area that we want. We'll be drawing in the detail of the suits on, on every one um, a little bit later. First we're going to go ahead and do some line work on the faces to get uh, the cartoon started. So. Now that we have the pictures down, I'm going to just do a quick control S to save. And I'm going to start with Trump Jr. So instead of lining over his face, we want to create a new layer. And we're going to call this line. And I like to put, um, we're going to put each person into their own group. So we can do line and color and the persons. We're going to put, um, so what I just did there, I created a new layer by pressing Control shift n or you can go right here, um, and I dragged it down. You just pick it up and move it. See how you kind of move it around? So we're going to double click it and call it Color. I'm going to grab this one, this one, and this one by pressing Shift and clicking the first. And So I started with the first one, I press Shift, and then clicked on the last one and it grabs everything. And then new group from layers and we're going to call this Don Jr. And now we're going to have everything separated. I made the mistake a long time ago of um, thinking that I could do that with smart objects and it be treated the same, but I find that working with groups is better when it comes to being able to directly edit um, multiple things that you want to have really sort of dynamic interaction with. And when I mean dynamic interaction, I mean if I want to now take um, Don Jr. and treat this entire group as one object, sort of, uh, I could hit Control T and be able to transform the entire group and make it bigger or smaller together. So everything we have between the layers, the line, everything we do on the line layer, everything we do on the color layer, and the original will all be manipulated together as a group. And that's why I like to do it this way. So we're going to start with this and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to zoom in on him. And to uh, show you how I have picked my brush and then you'll kind of see, um, I have some already started, but we'll, we'll create them from scratch so you can do it too. So let's do uh, brush settings. I'm just click on it here. We'll make it four pixels. Um, we have our angle at 90, our roundness at 80, and our hardness at 100. Spacing, you kind of want to keep it between 10 and 25. Uh, some people like 10. <laughs> some like 15. I don't really care as long as it's between 10 and 25. Um, and then once you have it, go to this little, uh, it has parallel horizontal lines. Click on it and go to new brush preset and name it whatever you want. We're going to call this um, cartoon line and we're going to click on brushes and you can see it's right here. So whenever you want to use that brush, it'll be saved for you and you kind of just click the one you want to use. So we'll just go here. 
whenever you want to go to your brush tool, just press the uh, letter B. And we're going to press B now. It's already there. And we're going to make sure we're on the right layer. We're on line. We're going to get real close. We want to get a little bit closer. I'm pressing H to bring it down. We're going to come in even closer. There we go. Now we're going to start with just sort of going over his forehead. We're going to get a nice smooth line. Um, notice how the end of the line kind of got um, a little transparent. So we're going to turn that off by clicking this. See how that goes off and on? Here's the difference. When it's turned on, it's sort of soft. When it's hard, it's real hard. See the difference? The ends of each side is a little different. So we have it turned off, and now we'll get a nice cartoon line. Sometimes I'll turn it back on. Um, and in fact, with this, I think I'm going to make it even smaller. So instead of four, I'm going to do three. So I'm going to go back to brush settings. We're going to do this at three, and we'll just make a second um, preset. So we're going to call this three cartoon. And whenever we want to get the smaller one, it will be right here. So we just did two of them. So we have new brushes, and this one's a little smaller. I like this one better. We'll do maybe the conference table in a four, but when we're doing with faces, sometimes I like to go a little bit uh, smaller brush so that we can get better detail. So here we're just going around the chin. And I'm going to go ahead and hide these other ones that we're not looking at just so I can see it real well. So we're still on the same layer, which is good. I'm using the hand tool to move up. And I'm actually going to turn this down. So I'm going to go to his original picture, which is right here. And we're going to lower the opacity to about 48. I like to go between 30 and 50. And then we're going to go back to line. And this way we can really see what we've drawn. Now to get this area, it's hard for my wrist to get. So I like to press the letter uh, R on your computer. And this will rotate your computer, your, your, the image, without actually distorting it. So now I'm pressing B. I went from R to H to B. So I'm pressing R again to rotate. And this way I can move the uh, direction in which I see the image without it actually messing up or distorting any pixels or actually moving the image. So if you ever have trouble getting around an area, just remember you can rotate. I'm making this brush smaller and smaller. I'm erasing at the eraser tool. I pressed E. I erased an area of the line just to make it a little bit smoother. I'm going back to B, brush. Sometimes I find with line work, um, sometimes it's easier to start a second line than to continue the originating line. Sometimes it just makes it a little bit easier. I pressed Control Z to undo. I wanted to have a long, smooth, uninterrupted line versus bunch of small lines. So here I'm sort of erasing just a little hint of it so it looks like it's sort of fading off a little bit. Okay so I want to go and now click on this little tool. I'm not even sure what it's called but it allows you to um, have soft edges. See now I'm going real smooth up in here. I kind of treat it like an airbrush fade tool is sort of what it is. The reason why I don't know what it's called is because I've been using Photoshop since Photoshop 4. <laughs> and I remember the days when um, we didn't have that tool. We had an airbrush tool. And then it came on here. And as you can see, it's not even labeled. So I don't know what that is. But I can tell you it works like a fade tool. It doesn't just do... It doesn't just fade the beginning of the line, it fades the beginning and the end of the line. So here I'm erasing, I erase sometimes around the line just to kind of give it smooth smoothness. Um, if you're using Illustrator, there's already existing brush tools that sort of 
um, make a line look like it has different line widths already. In Photoshop, I find it sometimes pretty difficult to just manually do that. I mean, I, I, I mean, I do it and it's easy, but it would be easier in Illustrator. But when you're dealing with Photoshop, there are tricks you can do to get away with having the sort of same look you get in Illustrator without having to use those same tools. So here I'm just going over these little details, like this is his tie, this is his suit. And I'm going over things that stand out even through the, um, I'm pressing R, things that go through the, uh, the image, so we're, we're going to be filling in the rest of that. This is going to go here and pressing E to erase just sort of this extra area. There's some areas of this image that we can increase the, uh, the line and others where we'll make it thinner and that way it kind of has line variances. So to get a different line variance if we wanted to have um, let's say this area under the chin let's say we wanted to take this part and just give it an extra line width you can go over the same area two or three times and make it thicker. And then as it's coming out this way, we'll feather it by just kind of lightly applying pressure on the end. And then we can press E to erase, which is already has a hard end, not a soft. It's not, the hardness is 100%. And we're going to just erase barely on the bottom. Notice how the center of the crosshair is underneath the pixels, the black pixels. We want to just barely shave it off. And shaving it down and now we've kind of given it that illustrator vector look right here we can do the same thing probably under the ear like right in here so we're going to come down and we're going to just apply just a little bit of paint and we're going to make it kind of look like a triangle a skewed triangle sort of um, and then we'll erase on the way down so it kind of has a tail, like a triangle with a tail. This one's kind of like a triangle with a tail, and so is this one. We're going to press R to rotate. So we have sort of the main points. We haven't done the face yet. So we're going to do the hair. Um, for the hair, you definitely want to make sure that this uh, fade is checked this faded airbrush tool. I don't know what it's called, but I'm going to call it faded airbrush and you'll know what I mean. So when I started this, the fade was kind of light and uh, kind of dark. So we're going to do that again and make it a little bit lighter. Even though the curve was correct, we kind of want to follow the hairline, but start softly. See how soft that is? And now we're going to apply pressure. I like that, but I don't like it enough, so I'm going to kind of go back. There we go. Once you have the first one, you kind of just sort of copy the technique with the rest of them. We're doing this sort of uh, tracing technique so we can follow his hairline while still giving it an illustrated look. Like we know how his hair sits. We'll add color in between all these lines. I'm going to press erase right here so that it doesn't look like those strokes went outside of the outline that we made. <laughs> I'm going to press H just to bring it down. And anytime you mess up, just press Control Z. And what we'll do once we take uh, the full line work of um, Don Jr., once that's complete, we're going to take a snapshot through the history panel. And 
that can be very valuable later in case we ever want to go back into the time in which we've put into the, the image. We can go back and make it look how we want if we need to. All right, so we have that part done. Um, we haven't really put a lot of detail into the hair on the side. We've just sort of filled it in and that's okay. We can always go back in and add the rest later. I'm gonna press R to rotate and we're gonna do the side. I like to sort of rotate an image so that it's comfortable for my wrist to get to areas I think everyone sort of has a natural wrist flow when it comes to painting in Photoshop. Um, so just remember that Photoshop is really cool about letting you rotate an image. Most people don't know this or use that tool. So pressing R can allow you to do these uh, really cool ways of you know moving an image without distorting it. I mean, it won't print this way. I mean, it's sideways, you know. So it's not going to be saved this way. If I were to save it right now in this position, it's not going to save it sideways. It's going to save it the normal way. All the R does is rotate the artist's view of it so that we can move it like it's paper. some longer hairs instead of shorter hairs. There we go. Now I'm going to go in and sort of darken some so they'll match the top of the head. I did the lighter ones first so that it would look like it's really detailed from far away. in I'm sort of applying a lot of pressure in the beginning and letting go of my pen and just sort of letting that um, feather out because if I didn't let it feather out here's what it would do and it would just leave a hard edge and I don't want to do that right now because you know the the hairline is real soft right here and then it gets harder you know I just had it make it soft in here we're going to press R and we're going to rotate again. And this is sort of where we're going with it. It's kind of nice. And we haven't even added the color to his hair, so this is just a little bit of line work. We're going to come in and we're going to do his eyes now. I'm pressing B to get back to our brushes and it automatically took me to this one. And before I do the eyebrows, I like to do the eyes first so we can kind of get the creases of the, the eyelid in there. So I like to start the edge very softly, but it didn't turn out soft. I think this got turned off, so we're going to turn this back on, and now it's soft again. So I went from soft to hard there in one stroke. It kind of went like this, like that. And then we're going to make the end soft and kind of have it come down. We're going to go over it a few times. You can kind of see that this was all sort of even and then it kind of tapered out into a fade at the end. This was real soft. The soft strokes kind of lower the opacity to about 40 or 50. Um, in the center there, I kind of pressed a little bit harder and that's sort of where the shadow is. So we're going to leave that. When we're doing eyes, I like to be real soft on the edge here and really sort of hard in the center. Um, well, on the sides of the eye, like sometimes in the center, just a couple dots, but not the, the full thing, just a little bit. 
So it kind of looks more natural. We're going to take the E eraser tool and just kind of soften that. And we're going to zoom in because I want to see where his pupil is. And we're going to lower the, I'm pressing um, the inside bracket to make the brush uh, a two instead of a three. So we're going to just sort of circle that just a little bit so we can see the pupil. And then we're going to zoom out. And we're going to do the other side right here. Um, I'm going to actually zoom out because I want to see the other eye as I'm doing it. So I'm going to actually zoom into both eyes. There we go. Um, when you're doing the first eye, it's okay to get really close. When you're doing a second eye, I find it helpful to be um, looking at the other eye so they can look like they match. Now keep in mind that um, eyes are not symmetrical. Everyone has two different eyes. They both look two different ways. So even if you horizontally transformed in an image, thinking that they would look the same from the other angle, they really don't. They look different. So the eyes are not going to be the same. You don't want to copy and paste an eye. That usually looks weird. <laughs> um, but here we're going to um, just make sure they look like they are similar, that they sort of have the same, uh, you want to have the, the pupils exactly in the same center. We want the highlight of the eye to sort of um, be complementary of each other. That looks kind of even. The crease here is a little different than the crease here, so I'm going to have to add more crease here so they start to match a little bit more. Alright, so now it's starting to match, but notice how the shade under this eye kind of has a U, and the shape under this eye kind of has a straight line. So we're going to imply a U right here under the eye, and then we're going to erase the area on top like that, and we're going to kind of just pretend like we know what his eye looks like <laughs> and just sort of fill in areas and lightly create this sort of uh, wrinkle under this eye. We're going to lightly just kind of bring it down. And we can go kind of hard right here where the nose is, where that, not the top of the nose, but sort of this hard bone of the nose. We can feather the area above it, and we can sort of feather the area below it. But in this area, we kind of want to give it a real strong uh, line work so we can see this nose right here. I like to go kind of hard on um, the outer parts of the nostril and kind of lighten my way in and and feather down the bottom like this. You don't want to really have a hard nose unless you're creating a real stylized look. Some some look really good when it's done that right way, but with the kind of look we're going for, I kind of like to have a really soft edge here. We're going to press H and then we're going to press B. We're giving them some soft lines. So when you're doing sort of a lip, I like to start with a sort of a U kind of flow. And when you're doing sort of a mouth, kind of bringing it down, creating another little U, and then going like this and giving a little curve at the top kind of helps create that lip look. Kind of makes it look happy. Notice how I feathered both ends of this. And here we're going to make it really hard all the way across and I'm applying full pressure. We're going to softly come in here and just sort of fill in this shadow area around the lip. We're going to add another little uh, extra lining around the nose at the bottom and then press E to erase parts of the line that will give it a more rounded look like this. Now his nose doesn't really look like that. That was sort of artistic liberty. I just kind of wanted to, to do that. And then I'm going to press H to go up and we're going to do his eyebrows. 
again I'm still at two um, some of his eyebrows will do at three but we're gonna start with two and that way from far away it will look pretty um, detailed so I'm starting by just kind of applying light pressure and going from bottom to top bottom to top bottom to top because that's the way the hair grows and we're going to go all the way to the end here and we're going to just add a few hairs that are going sideways instead of up not because they're actually sideways but because it's sort of a photoshop trick you know that the pixels that are there will hide um, it will hide that it won't actually show it going sideways it just sort of fills in some of those pixels Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, control minus to zoom out, and we're going to just kind of look at that. There's still this sort of area we want to do around his neck right in here, so I'm just going to lightly come in here and just sort of add. Maybe not that one, maybe just that one. Yeah, now we can kind of get a little bit of definition there. We're going to press R, we're going to move it down, we can kind of see how it's starting to look. If we have the others in, you can kind of see. Um, let's make this at 100%. We lower it, we can kind of see. So you can kind of go in and out and see how it's starting to come along. <clears throat> Gonna reposition myself. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in. We're gonna start applying color. So what I like to do is um, <clears throat> I like to start with going to the original, this Trump Jr. layer. We're gonna lower the opacity. Um, well, actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and I'll show you how to create um, the swatches we'll need in, in libraries. So open up libraries, go to this little horizontal panel, and click on create new library. We're going to call this, um, we'll just call this Don Jr. Create. And then we're going to press the letter I. This is the eyedropper tool. It looks like this. You can click anywhere on the face and it will change this little foreground color over here. Um, we're going to pick probably uh, six to eight colors to do his face. So we'll start here. It's sort of like a medium color and we're going to add to swatches. Click OK and now you can see it's showing up right here. So we're going to do that to different points in his face. We're going to click we're on, still on the eyedropper, which is this tool. It's also pressing the letter I. One way, one way I like to remember I is for eyedropper. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I, eyedropper. Um, <laughs> it kind of helps a little bit. Um, so now there's two. We're going to click another area up here. Add to swatches. Okay. Cancel. Now we have three. Let's do a little bit of a scruff and a swatches. Cancel. Now we have four. Let's do this little dark area down here and a swatches. That's five. Cancel. Let's do a little bit of his nose and a swatches. Cancel. Six. Let's see, let's do that one. Sometimes getting colors of the nose actually helps the colorization of the entire face. So don't be afraid to get like, you know, areas of the face that you'd be like, I don't know if that's the color of his full face. Because, you know, it could actually look really good to take certain parts and manipulate it. Let's get some of that too. 
and <clears throat> we'll get a couple more. Let's get his ear and a little bit of his mouth. We should also do his hair. So to do his hair, I'm going to just briefly hide the line and just show his actual hair. And I'm going to just grab, so that one's black. We don't need to put that into the swatches. But there's this little gray area that's sort of the highlight of uh, his, his hair, I think, has some kind of gel in it. So we're going to save the color of the gel in his hair and go to libraries and kind of pull that up. We're going to add it to swatches. And we'll grab some of this brown right there. Yeah, see, that's not black, that's brown. We're going to add that. And he has a little bit of this gray blonde. So yeah, we're going to add that too. <clears throat> and uh, that should be our last one. All right, so now we have our, our, li our libraries. We're going to make it bigger by just grabbing the top. And we can kind of make it the size we want. Now, this is sort of a, a color palette that we're going to use for Don Jr. Oh, I should probably grab his eyebrow. Let's grab that one because we can still fit maybe one more. See how there's one little spot right there? So let's go ahead and fill it. All right. So now it's filled up. We can put more in there if we want. I have some in here. I'll just kind of show you. You know, I've got colors for blue. I've got colors in here for flesh tones of different kinds. I do a lot of cartoons. Um, so I've got colors in here for everything. I mean, if I want swampy, I can do someone's face. It's all green and brown. <laughs> um, cartoon colors. So for Don Jr., this is sort of his color palette. I have some in here for other people too. Um, so there's um, General Mattis. This is his skin tone in some pictures. And, and and as you can see, that doesn't even look like if you looked at someone in real life, you'd be like, "What? Well, your face has a lot of red and pink." But you know, when you're dealing with images online and you're dealing with web images, you can find that people have very interesting skin tones that show through. Um, let's see here, this here, this bottom half, this area here, this is General Flynn's skin tone right here. So I've taken a lot of different samples from a lot of different faces to get sort of accurate skin tone. Um, so with Don Jr., all I, you know, all I did there was just kind of, you can go through your library. The ones above the line here are your most recently accessed libraries. So if I wanted to open one I just showed you, like Champagne Tones is right there at the top, Swampy's at the top, and we're back to Don Jr. Just wanted to show you that real quick because I find it very helpful. So we're going to go and we're going to click on this color layer, not line or you'll mess it up. Don't go to Trump Jr. and do it. Uh, you want to make sure that when you're doing a, um, a color fill, you do it sandwiched between the original photo and the line work. You always want to make sure you have um, color and line separated when you're doing cartoon work. And the reason why is because you want to be able to manipulate your color behind your line without having to erase your line if you mess up. And you'll see what I mean when I get started. So I'm going to start by uh, making sure, like I said, that I'm on the right one. I'm on color. Good. I'm going to go to libraries and we're going to start with sort of this area. All right. So when I get started, I want to have a brush that has a softer, has softer edges than the one we use to do line work. So we're going to go and I already have one started. I'll just sort of show you my settings. I call it nine soft. In the brush settings, here's what I have. It's nine pixels. I have the angle at uh, zero, roundness is at 100, 
hardness is at zero, spacing is at 25, and I and the arrow is facing the default right. It doesn't matter if it's up, down, sideways. It doesn't matter where this is. It will remain circular as long as it's at 100. So we're going to close that. And now we have this brush. It'll kind of look like that. I'm going to make this flow at 100. It doesn't need to be at 45. So I have my flow at 100, my opacity is at 100, and this is these are the stats for that. So we're going to go, just make sure where we are, <laughs> and I'm just slightly go over it. I'm using very soft um, strokes. I'm not applying too much pressure to start. And I'm only going over the lightest areas of his face. I'm pressing H bringing it down, pressing B to go back to brush. I'm going sort of over the top of his head and the sides of his face to kind of start giving it a little bit of highlight.